Well, the Coalition's nuclear energy proposal is expected to include large-scale nuclear reactors, not just small modular reactors. Joining us live now, the Shadow Foreign Affairs Minister, Simon Birmingham. Simon, uh, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. So, can you confirm this? Large-scale nuclear reactors are going to be part of your energy plan. Well, what I can confirm is that we will be releasing detailed policies oh, here, and well-considered we and assessed <laughs> policies. Yeah, well, all, uh, all these, le all these to leaks the to the papers and you're not going to give I'd, me anything. Look, I'd, <laughs> I, I'd love to jump out ahead of Darts and Ted and just yeah, give you right. the scoop, Pete, but it's not okay. going to happen. Instead, what we will be doing, it'll be a policy that really looks at the three key pillars that have got to be delivered. Okay? And that is how do we ensure reliability in our energy grid? How do we ensure the lowest cost? and the most reliable pathway towards net zero emissions. And that is where we've been very open about the fact we have been looking at removing the prohibitions on nuclear energy in Australia and, mm. and how that could play a, a role. How are you going to do that, that we by the way? Actually I mean, that, do that, get to net zero. That can't be easy to remove those nuclear prohibitions. Uh, well, this is, uh, this is, of course, why, firstly, we're doing the detailed policy work. Yeah. But secondly, we will take it to the Australian people. Uh, mm -hmm. And it will be a very honest conversation. You know, this is uh, a matter of uh, some political courage by Peter Dutton and our team sure. uh, to look at something that historically has been put off the table in Australia. Uh, but realistically, we are uh, the only G20 country to not either have nuclear energy or be undertaking work towards nuclear energy as mm. part of a net zero future. Uh, and so we are completely out of step. And of course, it makes no sense when we are also a G20 nation with some of the largest known reserves uh, of uranium deposits in our country. So once again, we are blessed as we are in almost all spheres of energy uh, with great resources available to us as a country. And yet in this space, so we have laws at present that say they're not actually able to be used in our country. Uh, we're looking at how we might change that, what the mm. best approach would be, and we will take it to the people quite transparently mm. to say, you know, this is a difficult change that Australia has to have an open conversation about, uh, but we will seek a mandate from the Australian people to make those changes with detailed policy, and it will be far more credible uh, than the type of $270 promise uh, to cut Australia's electricity bills that Anthony Albanese took the last election, which, of course, has proven to be a complete bunkum when Australians have seen their electricity bills go up, not yeah. down, contrary so, to his promises. Yeah, so I just I just had the Treasurer on, and uh, we were talking about this. Uh, he referred to to this leak so far of detail as, uh, as the Coalition's nuclear fantasy. Um, you know, he obviously backed in his government's plan for renewables, saying they are the way of the future. Pointing to nuclear, saying the costs are going to be out of control... What do you do with waste? How are you going to afford it? All that kind of stuff. So, I mean, is, is that an example of uh, the political courage you're going to need to, to be able to come up against all of that and have answers for all of that? Peter, it is sad that it looks like we're going to see a massive scare campaign from the Labor Party on this, uh, rather than actually looking at the fact that taking a technology-neutral approach uh, to how Australia assesses its energy mix is a sensible thing to do. Uh, now, the Albanese government's plans involve tens of billions of dollars of, of network upgrades, uh, which is essentially big new infrastructure investments in poles and wires being built across the country, uh, whereas there is a chance that in looking at the type of work that we have considered, you'll be able to make better use of existing infrastructure rather than the enormous costs mm. and the environmental impact uh, that all of those additional new poles and wires uh, okay. require. So there are a lot of different parts to the energy mix. It's why it is complex, but Ted O'Brien has been doing uh, a huge body of work and analysis to make yeah. sure that we are taking the right and careful steps uh, to ultimately give uh, our energy market uh, a technology neutral approach uh, that can ensure that new generation technologies in the nuclear space that are zero emissions have a chance okay. of playing a yeah. role.